11 billion dollars on a 19 and a half trillion dollar economy doesn't sound like too much. Maybe we should just, you know, do it again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, th that's the mechanical view of what's impacted the shutdown. And it basically goes, well, you look, you got 800,000 workers, that's less than 2% of workers and they were only out of work for a short time and now they're going to get some back pay. So how, ba how bad could it be? If that's all that happened, I kind of agree with you. Uh, but of course, the spiraling effect of people start to freak out if consumer spending goes down, if consumer confidence collapses, if business gets worried that the government's totally dysfunctional and so they stop investing, it could be a whole lot worse than just what that number is. And that, so that's yeah. the thing that everybody's kind of got their eye on. And I was saying, just of course, uh, Jimmy, you know, uh, yeah. we were getting there, it seemed, with the air traffic controllers starting not to show up. I mean, you could imagine the economic consequences of a lack of air travel being felt pretty quickly. If we were to go back three weeks from now and have a shutdown, one would imagine we'd be right back there. Yeah, boy, I have a hard time believing that's going to happen. Uh, the president would just put himself right back in the exact same box. You have to be, a, you know, be a real masochist to want to do that. Uh, if, if Austin's taking the more dynamic view, I'm going to take sort of the super dynamic view that the real risk here is one that we look like a banana republic. I mean, for sure, we should not have any more shutdowns. And while we're at it, uh, get rid of the idea of, of debt ceilings. Terrible idea. I think more broadly, especially if the president takes this next step and declares a national emergency, if you're an investor in, in United States assets, you have to wonder about rule of law issues uh, when you have a president who is willing to push the boundaries as far as they can be pushed. I think that's a really sort of bad long-term drag on how safe people view their investments in the United States. Speaking of a long-term drag, Austin, just at the top of the hour here, we got a new report from the Congressional Budget Office says the U.S. budget deficit this year is set to hit $897 billion. That's more than 100, that's about a $118 billion increase from the year before. This is part of what Howard Schultz, former Starbucks CEO, has been talking about as he considers strongly an independent bid in 2020. Are, are Americans going to care next year in the election about this deficit that is growing into the trillion dollar mark? Well, look, the, the Howard Schultz thing's a whole separate thing. I think it's a really bad idea for him to do that. If you look at the deficit, the problem of the deficit is that we're running this up during a boom. Okay, so we, when we have a recession, the deficit does get bigger because incomes go down and we got a bunch of automatic stabilizer spending that goes out the door. But we've never had a situation doing this during a boom and if the economy were to slow, let's say we were to have a recession in the next 12 or 18 months, that number is going to skyrocket. Uh, and then you're going to see the same, you would think you would see the same deficit scolds that were out hounding Barack Obama during a deep recession would come back out. But I don't think people are going to care because I think mostly that, like everything else, become a totally partisan issue. So the Republicans, once there's a Republican president, they're going to say, oh, no, it doesn't make any difference. I'm glad to hear Austin show some concern about the deficit. I'm sure if we bring him back in six months, uh, he will fully be part of the modern monetary theory cult. He will not care about deficits at all. This may be the last we gasp of fiscal Jimmy responsibility we see from you. <laughs> It's hey, true. It's hard look, to decipher which group, the, which party. If this is a partisan issue, Austin, which party cares about the deficit? It's not clear no, either. None. Them do. None. No. Look, the, the, as I want to say, you got to distinguish two things about the deficit. The first is how much of the deficit is being driven by the business cycle. And then the second is what's driving the deficit. If you're driving up the deficit by cutting taxes for very high income people and big corporations, which is how we got to where we are in, in this situation, I think you're making a mistake. That's a long run mistake because the supply side line of thinking that says in any time frame, these tax cuts are going to pay for themselves. That's a that's a fantasy that's been disproven over and over. And what we need is to be making some investments that are going to help the productivity growth and the economic growth. If they were doing that, if they were making investments, I would be far less concerned about what the deficit impact is. If we're just having big tax cuts to give one-time windfalls to people to bring their money that they've been hiding back uh, on shore, I, I, I think that's pointless. But you like the lower corporate yeah, tax rate, right, Austin? You do like the lower corporate tax rate. I like tax the rate. lower corporate tax rate. I called for it. I just wanted it paid for, not 
not paid for by somebody else. Jimmy, granting your point that uh, the idea of being alarmed about the deficit does not really seem to have as much of a home as it used to, if one were to be concerned about it right now, can't you now make a better case that it's a revenue problem? If you look at tax revenue as a percentage of GDP, that is below the long-term trend. And does that inform what the debate's going to look like? Uh, well, listen, I mean, we, we, we did find the one person still concerned about the deficit in Howard Schultz. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to uh, recommend tax increases. Listen, over the short term, yeah, there's, de there's definitely a revenue issue. Uh, these tax cuts aren't going to pay for themselves, and they are, that is playing a role in the increasing deficit. Longer term, as I'm sure Austin uh, would agree, uh, it, is a spend it is a spending issue, is it is an entitlement issue. So short term, if you were going to say we need to you know, go after the deficit, yeah, you might, you might propose some sorts of tax increases. Uh, I think longer term, uh, you're probably looking at a value-added tax. That doesn't seem to be where Democrats want to go. They want these more punitive taxes on, uh, on wealthy people, on corporations, economically inefficient taxes. Uh, but I think either way, I mean, higher, I think higher taxes are in our future. Yeah, well, oh, wow. Jimmy, tax was you, part you of the write initial, it down. Uh, Jimmy just said yes, that. Now his friends are going to come after him. I don't feel good about him. saying that, Austin. I feel very <laughs> I bad saying that. <laughs> I will Austin, protect you, Jimmy. I will protect you. Oh, that's Austin, a, that, you're me, no shield. It's going to be cold in Chicago, but I, I will put <laughs> you in guys, my basement. I think these Probably. guys are, have got a speaking gig, maybe. All, you know, <laughs> one of those versus. Austin, no, I want to ask this last question on Howard Schultz. I mean, the guy's a Democrat. He's a liberal socially. Yet he doesn't seem to feel he has a home in the Democratic Party to be able to effectively run a campaign because he's a moderate, doesn't hate corporations, thinks capital markets may be okay. Uh, does that say something about where the Democratic Party is right now? No, I think this says more about Howard Schultz wanting to get Howard Schultz's name out there in the public. His, his, uh, his logo is literally Howard Schultz, and then he signed Howard on top of Howard Schultz. That's the campaign logo. So. I don't, I don't view this as an indicator of anything about politics. I think it's more of an indicator about what his own desires are.